Commission meeting. Today's Monday, March 25th. Oh, my mom's birthday. 2024. Uh, the time is now 10 a.m. Please call the roll. I mean, uh, 10.03. Call the roll. Commissioner Casciano? Present. Commissioner Simone? Here. Commissioner Serio? <coughs> Here. Vice Mayor Schwartz? Here. Mayor Rosano? Here. Please rise for a moment of silence, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> okay. Our first item of business is number one, a resolution. David. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. David Tulsa, City Attorney. Resolution is item 1A. This is a resolution of the City of Margate, Florida, approving the separation agreement between Joseph Galaska and the City of Margate, Florida, providing for retirement benefits, providing for an effective date. This resolution is before you for your consideration. What is the wish of the board? Motion to approve. A second for a quick discussion. All right. Okay. Um, I had a question for the City Attorney. As part of the separation <clears throat> agreement, is this similar to a few we've done recently where there's a release of liability in there? Uh, yes. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Public. Roll the roll. Commissioner Caggiano? Yes. Commissioner Simone? Yes. Commissioner Serio? Yes. Vice Mayor Schwartz? Yes. Mayor Rosano? Yes. Okay, being that is the only item up here, I'm going to open this up for a little bit for, uh, I guess now then we're going to have to uh, pick a new chief? Uh, yes, sir. It would be appropriate. Probably should have had that on the, here. Apologize. Correct. It would be appropriate for the commission to select an interim chief. Okay. Is there any names anybody would like to intern? I'd like to make a, a motion to insert the name uh, Mike Palmer, Major Mike Palmer. Mike Palmer. Second. Second. Discussion, uh, Commissioner Serio. Oh, sorry, I was gonna mention the same name. Is it appropriate to discuss now the powers that such person would have, or do we wait till afterwards? Is it what we should? Say? I asked whether or not I could discuss some of the powers that. You mean the job description? Have. Sure. Now, now's the best time than ever. Well, correct. Okay. So I need a guest to ask the attorney so that <clears> I can <throat> have a copy of the job description in front of me. What meaningful change a person can make based on a union contract? <clears throat> you want me to That's break it. that well, more for you? I, I'm sure that somebody can make meaningful change notwithstanding the existence of union contracts. Um, you know, I, and then it also depends upon what kind of change you're talking about. Well, for example, the words negotiated departure came up when I was reading something. And I didn't know if something like that was in the contract or not, because I'd like to think that the person we give this job to and then the person who may get that job permanently has the opportunity to do what was mentioned about clean house if it's necessary. <clears throat> so I don't know if this is the appropriate time to have that conversation, but I would like to think that the person taking this job now would feel that he has the opportunity to make change or else we're just wasting everyone's time. I, if I, I might. I agree. I think that the, the new chief should be able to, interim chief should be able I to need make to ask. all the yeah. changes they need to make. Well, I, if, I might, if I might, I think those questions are best put towards <clears throat> the person that you appoint as interim chief. So if you vote on that motion now and then ask those questions, I think that would okay. be appropriate. And I was just gonna add on I believe we're still going to review some of the mm -hmm. incidents <clears throat> based on the last meeting. We still approved the continued investigation mm -hmm. or, or report. I mean, there, you know, the mayor had brought up some, even though we were in disagreement on a couple of things, he brought up some really good points as far as us as policymakers, based on the review that's going to come back. There's still some policies that we can work with the new chief to change that are outside of union contracts mm -hmm. that might mm -hmm. prevent some of these perceptions of these certain behaviors in the future. 
So that's a tar purview for sure. Then I will wait. So, and, and I'll just <clears throat> add that um, as, as interim chief, um, the, the interim chief will be expected to carry out the duties as a, a regular chief. And, and that okay. is, you know, hiring, firing, discipline, well, hiring, firing falls within me, but, you know, disciplinary matters, um, organizational um, updates, changes, recommendations of, of, of those type of things. Mm -hmm. um, I expect um, interim chief to carry those out as if he or she were chief um, in consultation with myself and um, certainly keep you all apprised of, of anything that comes about regarding that. Well, that's exactly what I wanted to hear. All right, I just got a couple questions. As far, I'm going by the succession plan is right after chief, we have our majors, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, the majors can only be chosen from within, is that correct? Yes, they are selected from the captains and lieutenants. And they're not bound by the union, right? So it's kind of a um, <clears throat> unique um, situation. So lieutenants and captains are covered by a union agreement. Um, the, the majors are appointed by the chief from lieutenants and captains. Um, if they are um, removed from the major position, they fall back to right. their previous the chief held can position. Make that decision. Chief can make that decision with my approval. Yes. So the decision to for the majors to go back to and after that is captains. You're saying it would be their previously held position, whether would that be a lieutenant or a captain. And how many captains do we have? Um, we don't have any. There's, there's Mike Palma was the only captain that was appointed. Okay, to so. The major. So in the in the if you look under our budget, do we have an open position for a captain? No. Okay. Back to being lieutenants because they would have to. That right. So, they were never so if, anything beyond that. So of the three majors, mm -hmm. one of them was formerly a captain. Two of them were formerly lieutenants. Correct. Okay. <clears throat> so as far as the majors, who put the wording in there that says that allowed to go back to lieutenant? So that oh, is. Right. We were asked to put that in. So the commission. So that the, the, the commission. I know every answer I'm asking. I just want clarification. You'll see where I'm going with it. Oh, I know. It. Okay. I, I'm not sure I understand it. So, so the, the major positions were created and brought before the commission with that language in there. Correct. Okay. So it's suggested by the police department. I, my memory serves me correct. Yes, that would have been something that was suggested or recommended by the police department to be put in there but it wasn't bargained for no no because i know where no. you're going okay <clears throat> so if we wanted to make it where the majors were not allowed to go back how do we do that um we'll have to look at, I, don't, I don't recall if the majors are referenced in the lieutenants and captains bargaining agreement or not? I believe it was a discussion with the union at the time. Um, well, now I'm confused. Right, and I am too because I wasn't prepared for this, so okay. I'll have to look into it. Um, but I believe but if you all wanted it so the majors could not go back to lieutenants and captains, um, one, we would have to look at the resolution we passed and, and amend. Um, those positions, and then two possibly negotiate with the union regarding those positions. Okay, is that something you guys would want to look into? The reason why is because I'm going to be talking to the interim chief about this and stuff we've made in the last year changes. I don't think we're the betterment of looking back at it. I don't think it was right. It was done right. So I don't want to make any changes until I hear what your issues are. And then deem oh. whether or not they're worthy. If to you want to hear my issues, I'm going to tell you my issues. I think Mike. Well, uh, yeah, I can't give you a uh, 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 carte blanche to do whatever you whatever you feel you want to do. No, you just problem. asked me for my end. Okay. Yeah, Commissioner Simone. I think we should leave it up to the interim chief. Of so do what's I. Best for the department. I, yeah. I do 100, percent but I see in this system that we have if. And I talked to Mike about this. He's going to come in here. He's going to want to do some things. Yeah. His hands are tied, totally tied. If we were to look at this to give him some flexibility, number one being with the majors, 
Number two, possibly getting a deputy chief to groom them to become the next chief. But right now, he can only deal with what he has. So, Mike, I'll talk to you more about it. And if you have any suggestions or any other ways you think that we can get to where we need to get quicker, better, smoother. But right now, I kind of see this is just going to be you're, the, you're going to be the new guy. Clicks are going to be there. You don't do what the clicks do. Union's going to be there. And I don't want that. I really don't want that. And he's on an island by himself. And I think that if he had a team of an assistant, of three majors that were part of this team, you wouldn't get this loosey-goosey stuff going around with all these other people coming up, pushing and driving in a way that was done last time to basically call for a no confidence vote. I think if you got great leadership at top, the bottom's gonna be happy. I think what happened was the leader, not only that, I don't know if you guys knew this, but when they were asked to do a no confidence vote on the chief, Majority of them wanted them to do it on the whole command staff. It wasn't just the chief. Majority wanted the whole command staff revamped. So with that being said, this right here, if we were to amend this, change it in any way, it would give him more flexibility. But right now, if he goes in there and starts doing things, it's going to look like retaliation. It's just going to happen. So we have to give him tools to work with. Without the tools, we're going to be in the same boat. But no matter, no matter what he does, if... If he does the same thing with the change versus without the change, it's still going to look like that. But who cares? <clears throat> it, what we need is to write to write it, whatever policy you want to have, uh, because yes, you're right. It's going to be clicks there no matter what happens. So I agree with you on that. I agree with you. The chief needs to make whatever changes he believes needs to be made. I agree with you on that too. Uh, I think one of the selling points for becoming, becoming a major for the captains and the lieutenants was the ability that if it didn't work out, they can go back because if they didn't want to take the shot of being out of the union and then possibly get fired and then have no recourse, you may uh, make that pool of people who wanted to become a major much smaller because you're not giving them the opportunity if they don't succeed they're gone as opposed to if they don't succeed they can fall back so i would like the chief to be able to to decide what he would prefer to have uh, and i think he should have some time to think about it before he is pigeonholed into doing making a decision right this moment before sitting down in in that big chair and thinking about it Right. I think that was um, when the major positions were created, that was a concern of the candidates. Correct. That's for what majors, I thought. That they would then become at will. They would no longer have. Correct. So they, they wanted to keep it in place so that they could fall back to their previously held position and still have, you know, job protection or, or <laughs> you know, union protection for something. And it may not even be that they do something wrong. It could be that a chief comes in and after a couple of years. Correct. Because chiefs don't usually stay more than a few yeah. years. They leave, a new chief comes in and wants to move people around just because. But, I mean, I'm open to it. Mayor, I'm open to it. I'd like to hear from the chief, not now, but maybe after a couple of weeks in there and, and see what, what changes he recommends. Um, I, I think ultimately... Antonio, what changes he recommends and what obstacles he has to making correct. them? I think that's just as important. Oh, correct. I think ultimately, and I've been clear about this, I, I would like to ultimately see a chief from the outside come in. I think as long as someone from the inside is here, you're always going to have the blame game of clicks. It doesn't matter who it is. So ultimately, I think okay. that'll go away <clears throat> once we have an outside, outside chief. But I want to make sure that the interim chief is set up for success. And if the reports Absolutely. come back and he comes back and makes recommendations, I would certainly look at changing how the majors are, are are brought in or removed my only concern is that if they're at will that we may not have anyone that wants to take those positions that's my only concern but you know i, I keep an open mind about it that's my concern also all right commissioner simone and 100 percent, we need to go outside to look for a chief that's a no-brainer to me 
<clears throat> and, and, and I just want to be clear on something. I think we have great men and women. I think Palmer absolutely is going to do a good job. I think there's other people within the department that could be a good chief. But I just feel with the stigma and what's going on over the last few years, whoever we put there permanently, I just think that we're asking for trouble. That's why I want to go outside. It's not to say that there's people here that can't do the job, but I just want to get rid of that perception of clicks or favoritism. All right. And I just want to say this. I'm, if we do get somebody. Oh, go ahead, Arlene. No, go ahead. I just want to see if my number ever came up. If we do wind up getting somebody in here, I would love to see the positions of the majors include people from the outside. You mean give the chief the opportunity to bring in his own majors? Of course, I wouldn't be opposed 100%. to that either. The question is, as always, how are you going to fund it? Because unless you're going to same way you're funding it now. Yeah, yeah, the, no, no, the, but the, just, the budget's there for the position. No, no, but you still, but with, you, you still have the ones that are there now. Well, they would go back to lieutenant. They would go back. Now. You're absolutely right. They go back. Uh, but then everybody else who's above them is going to go back. So if you're going to have more people, you're going to have to hire new people. New people is new money. Right. Commissioner Caggiano is, is correct. So right now we have majors filled by in-house people. Um, if we were to look at bringing in um, outside folks for that position, those majors would go back to their previously held, taking up those you know, personnel spots. And then if we wanted to bring in a major or assistant chief or deputy we have to chief, -budget. you're adding positions to do so. I, I, I wouldn't be opposed to that. You know, sometimes you've got to pay to get quality. I, just I, I, I know that. Hold on one second. I know that we only have the power to hire, fire and suspend the police chief. So technically, the chief could bring in whoever he wants. I just would like to have some sort of say. If, if we're going to bring in majors from the outside, I think that we should be able to just be part of the discussion on that. But I would be open if we have to come up with additional funds to bring majors in from the outside, I would, I would be fine with that. And, and I also think, you know, myself and, and um, you know, assuming interim Chief Paul, uh, Palma, if, if the commission votes that way, um, we're hearing the conversation here. Um, you know, it's something that he and I can, can discuss. Um, you know, there may be an opportunity um, if we have vacant officer positions that we don't need to you know, mm -hmm. add all of the positions back. Um, if you're dropping lieutenants down, you know, they can, you know, be a part of that force right. and, and whatnot. So it's, it's something that he and I will get together and, and, and talk about if, if that's the wish of this board is to see, you know, quick organizational change um, in the interim um, by adding positions, reducing positions, making those changes. Um, or if you all want to wait until we get a permanent chief in place to make those recommendations and whatnot as well. But Kel, I'd rather do it now. <clears throat> now, the only reason, because if we do go out for a search, we're probably going to ask, am I going to be able to bring people with me? Mm -hmm. And if you tell them no, it's kind of like some, some might not even consider. I mean, they're going to want to bring their team with them. It's just the way I look at it. Okay. Um, so you're Mayor. suggesting that we set up the structure to allow a new chief to bring someone majors in from the outside, but don't execute it until we find the new chief. Correct. Yeah, I think that'd be fair. I for think everybody. that's the best way. Vice Mayor, do you want to go? Uh, since everyone is discussing the next step, I made it really clear. There is no one within this department that I would promote into that permanent position for obvious reasons. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. When people become principals, they get out of the BTU or whoever union they're in, and they become <clears throat> annually contracted. And in April, they sit and they wait for the letter to say they've been reappointed. That's a calculated risk you take to move up. Yep. Nobody says to you, if you don't like it, you can go back, although I'm sure they can. However, when I talked about negotiated departure, I'm also talking about such things as with cause. Right now, we have a very toxic environment. And I would ask the new interim chief if he felt afterwards like saying something, if there was something he had in mind. There is no doubt in my mind that nobody's going to wake up today and say, gee, there was a problem. Everybody knows there was a problem. There's been a problem for a long time. 
There either need to be tools to fix it, and if it means that some of the problem steps back and winds up with more protection than they have now, then we haven't done anything for the problem except embedded it. So I think we need to talk about what we do with the majors, because the whole idea was to give the person who was chief a group of people they could rely on, talk to, and not have to worry about every thought running back to the union. Same reason the fire department, uh, that their division, which, whichever the name is for that, is out of the union, <clears throat> the division. So, you know, there, there can't be, if there's a problem in, as a posi in your position as a major, it rises to the level, other than you're not comfortable, it's not what you thought it was going to be, but if it rises to the level that it's toxic, then there needs to be an out clause for us as well as the department, or all you're doing is shifting around the marbles in the bag, and that's hadn't worked well for the last couple of years, apparently. So there needs to be something where you just don't keep a problem, or somebody who thinks that this is, you know, a cushiony job for the next 30 years because of the union backing. So whatever that takes to do, we need to modify that because otherwise nothing changes except the title. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and again, if after we vote or during this vote, the possible new acting chief would like to get up and say something, I'd love to hear it too. But that's up to him. Thank you. Um maybe the Kaler city manager, this, this appointment structurally and financially, how does it work? So um, in terms of, of structure, he just assumes, you know, interim chief role and has all the duties and, and powers and, and roles of, of the chief. Okay. Um, financially, when um, somebody is placed into an interim capacity of, of a position higher from where they're at and taking on additional responsibilities, um, we normally provide um, that there's a 10% additional responsibilities that's added to their whatever their current base salary is now. Can I interrupt you? Uh, do you know what the chief was making? Uh, chief Glasgow? Yeah. He was making 183855 And do you know what right now what um, Major Palm, Interim Chief Palm was making? I Prepared for this, yes. Um, he was. Uh, he's making one hundred and sixty-two eight forty-three. So if you go fifteen percent of ten percent or fifteen, by the ten percent, it's a sixteen thousand. It's pretty so close to where. Bring it to one seventy-nine, one twenty-seven. One seventy-nine. Yeah. Can we just put him at the at the, the same number the chief was making? That's um. That's at your discretion. So. I would leave it at. The, I would leave it at the ten, but uh, whatever you want. Uh, I think he's. I I think he's taking. A shot and a risk to do this, then I think that he should be compensated for it. No more than what the current chief was making, but I have no problem paying him what the current chief was making. All right, I guess I'll go down the line. And are you okay with that? I have no problem with that. Okay. Okay, with, uh, uh, to just be clear, we're okay with putting him at your, your question to Commissioner Caggiano is 183,855. Okay, okay. All right, thank you. Just need to end the motion. Okay, Commissioner Simone? I'm fine with that. Um, Commissioner Arcero? Yes. Vice Mayor? Okay. Yeah, and yes. Okay, so before we go on, you want an amendment, David? Yes, yeah, no? so um, somebody can amend Commissioner the Caggiano made the original motion, <clears throat> so if he wants to it. amend the motion to appoint uh, Mike Palma as interim chief at the um, proposed salary of 183855 All right, I'll amend it to, again, stay with uh, Major Palma to be the new chief interim chief, new chief, and him to get the uh, 183855 And I'll, I was the second, so Correct. I'll second that. I know, okay. Simone was the second director. Oh, okay, go ahead. Second. Okay. Discussion? <clears throat> Call the roll. Public? Call the roll. Commissioner Casciano? Yes. Commissioner Simone? Yes. Commissioner Serio? Yes. Vice Mayor Schwartz? Yes. <clears throat> Mayor Zano? Yes. Okay, so... Financially, Mike, you'll be making the same as the chief. You're basically going to be entitled to do as the chief did. We'll try to help you. If you come up with tools for us that you think will work with the city manager, let us know. Um, is there anything else you guys want to hit on? Or? I just want him to not be fearful of making changes that he feels are necessary. Yeah, I, I don't think. I don't want him to be fearful at all. Think. I want him to know that we're going to back him as 
if he's got to break some eggs to break clicks, if he's got to break some eggs to to get people to work together. Look, as I say it all the time, I want people in the city, uh, they run to our police, not from them. And I'll be damned if I have the police running from the police. He's got to break the eggs to get this department whole. Whatever it takes, if he feels he has to tell us in advance what's doing so that we don't all of a sudden have somebody running to us from the outside saying, oh, look what the chief did to us. I'd like to know just so that we're all on the same page because he's got some heavy lifting to do. And I want to make sure he has us. He knows that he has all of our support for it. Is there anything you'd like to say? I'd like to. Please. Yeah. <clears throat> Interim Chief Michael Palma, um, I just want to say thank you for your support and confidence in me. Um, you'll get the best from me every single day. And I will tell you this, the status quo is completely unacceptable. And it's not going to be status quo. There will be changes made. Of course, I'm going to communicate that with the city manager as well as all of you. But I don't want to rehash what everything we've been through. I don't think it's healthy, but I heard you loud and clear. And I know that change has to happen. And, and I'm going to make it happen. And that's why I stepped up to take this responsibility. I didn't have to do it, but Margate has been very good to me for the past 29 years, and I deserve to give back to the city, and I'm prepared to do that. Go get him. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Well, she is. Thank you. Thank you for your support. Lots of ribbons there. <laughs> All right. Any other commissioners have any comments? Do we need to? Oh, I'm sorry. Do we need to uh, discuss going for outside right now, uh, or we, we can we can touch on that if you guys want real quick. That's fine. Yeah, I, I kind of wanted to get an idea of next steps as well. I, it seems like there's a consensus to go outside, but is there any recommendations Kale has? I mean, I know personally, I would. I know in some positions, we got rid of <clears> using a recruiter. I think for a position like this, that we should find a recruiter that specializes in hiring first responder, you know, high ranking positions. I don't want to use, and I'm not going to mention the name of the former recruiter. I do not want to use her. And I, I don't want to pay a recruiter 90% up front before they actually produce. But I, I do think that we should hire a firm to at least do the initial, you know, uh, surveying and bringing candidates to us. I also think it needs to be nationwide. I disagree with that. I think it needs to be statewide because I've been told that at least in the state of Florida, everyone has a level, understands certain rules that they don't do in New York, Tennessee, or anywhere else. So I think it needs to be statewide. And quite frankly, I would not just, I would certainly not focus just on Broward right. County, but I think state, not necessarily nation. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that, Commissioner Swartz. The, the policing styles are different right. state to state. <clears throat> Look, if, if we have a bad pool, then I wouldn't mind going broader. But for the immediate, I would say statewide with a preference outside the county. <laughs> That's what oh, I said. absolutely. That's what I said. No, no, no. Yeah. I think the, yeah. the basis of understanding should be outside the county. Unless there's a jewel somewhere that, right, right. you know, but I'm not saying no. No, I'm just simply I'm just saying, saying if there's candidates yes. listening. Correct. You know, but if you're necessarily having a problem in your department, probably not a good idea to come here. And I also one more thing, just in case applicants are listening. I want someone who's either been a sheriff or a current police chief or has been a police chief in the past. I don't want this to be a, a learning ground for someone, you know, I know people got to start somewhere, but I really would prefer to not bring in a captain or something like that. I, I would like to bring in someone that <clears throat> has been a chief before and knows what, what needs to be done from day one. But I'll leave that for when I leave interview open. candidates, but leave that's just open. kind of my thought. Mike, good. I'm, out of curiosity, does HR go out and try and find someone like that for us? Because I'm kind of curious as to what 
during all of this process, HR's part is or is not? So HR will, will play a role in it, um, but certainly for a position of, of chief, I would recommend we um, use a recruiter to target specific areas, mm -hmm. um, you know, do a lot of the screening for us, um, you know, tailor a marketing brochure specific to that position. Um, I think it would be highly beneficial to, so, to do that and not just go through our standard hiring no, no, practice. I didn't, I didn't of, actually mean that. Um, do we then go and interview the people who might apply for that recruiter position? So, I mean, it, it's a position that is a hire and fire by the commission. I would imagine um, one or all of you would want to be a part of that. If all of you are part of it, it's it becomes more of a, a public setting. If one of you becomes kind of the liaison for the commission, then it's more of an individual type of interview or you guys can have individual interviews and then come back with with your recommendations. We've been down this path before and, and it's it sometimes gets you know a little difficult in, in that manner trying to you know um, come to a consensus on on an individual person <clears throat> um, but I think those details of, of once we start getting candidates we can start to identify how we want to interview the candidates um, and, I'm and, still talking about the recruiter you're still talking about oh you're talking about recruiter I'm, I, I, I'm talking I, I about know you and I are not on the same page here Excuse I just me. No, wanted so, to know of how we go about finding a recruiter as to whether we choose that or <clears> I'm not to the next part I'm to the first part got it if I, I can probably very easily bring you back at least three different recruiters for you to look at their their services and their history that was the question got it okay sorry okay uh Commissioner Simone and who puts together the job description? The job description's already, you know, established. Um, I think you know, we need a copy. Don't we can, you think we can we provide you all copy with, with copies of the um, job description. The marketing brochure or whatever that is that the recruiter does will be something that, that they put together based on information from, from the city. And we'll get input from you all as to certain qualities or um, qualifications that you're specifically looking for that are above and beyond what the, the job description calls for um, or preferences um, you know for example you could do a nationwide search but you know have a preference in there given to um, state of Florida experience type of thing so that way you're, you're kind of covering you know you're, you're not losing out on a you know rock star candidate from Texas or, or something but you know you're, you're still keeping your your preference in there for Florida if you chose to thank you and I'll ask just one question, because I don't think any of us have ever seen or had any input into any into the job description for that. I don't think I've ever seen it, and I think maybe <clears throat> there are certain things that need to be tweaked um, for those people that we have say about. So I would say if there are things we want to change, things we want to include, stuff that hasn't been updated in 20 years, this would be the time to do it. Okay, I can provide you with a um, copy of the uh, job description for chief of police. And I'd get the input from uh, the interim chief as well mm -hmm. as to uh, that process. <clears throat> chief, you're probably looking at us right now saying, wow, these guys support me, they vote for me, and now they're already looking for a new chief. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's no offense against us we love you but this is the way it has to be done we just can't go in the back room and sit there and talk and so this is total transparency here you know um i think you're going to do a fine job i think we all think you're going to do a fine job the future i don't know if your future is to be here and remain here for those few years i don't know there were talks to, um you know i heard of a guy named al lamberti he wanted to apply for this position he said he would love to come here I think that if you grab the horns, you start going with it, you're probably going to set it up best for anybody. So it's just a name that's going to, that, that was thrown out. But Kale, going back to the recruiter, that, that's cost money? Yes. <laughs> so maybe, maybe when it comes to the time where Mike feels that, you know, he's got things going, maybe it's time for chief, maybe possibly doing an interview with Al Lambert. He's, he's familiar with the county. He's up in Pensacola now. He's, he's had, uh, what, employees of over 3,000 employees? You know, I think he could be the one that could come in here and basically tighten things up as well with Mike and put us back in, in a good shape and put a succession plan in play, because I think that's the problem. 
<clears throat> whenever you have a, who I look at as a business or whatever, you have to have a succession plan. Right now, I do not see a succession plan in this department. I see Mike, and that's it, to be honest with you. Well, what we see now is a lot of backbiting. <clears throat> so I think between Mike, the people, yeah, go ahead, Mike. So my belief as the interim chief is, like I said, this is not status quo. This is my job is to make it better for a transitional, an ease transitional, whoever that person permanently may be. So I just want you to know that it's not my job just to keep everything steady. It's my job to make this better for the other person. And I hope to work with that person. Hopefully, you know, it's recognized that I'm going to put forth the best effort possible and that I work with the other person because I think that's a key component is that I'm part of that process to bring in that person because that person doesn't really know everybody here in Margate. And I think it's important that I'm part of that process. I just wanted to get that out there. Mike, I think that's great. The way I kind of look at it is you here now. When the time has come, we get another the chief in here come up with a budget amendment to put in an assistant chief, which you can go back to that role. You, the chief, you, de you determine your three captains or corporals or whatever the majors, those majors could possibly be chosen outside or within. Changes are made. I have no problem with that. But that'll establish a good team right there. And that's the way I look at it. And that's the direction I'd hope we'd go into. Because as of, you know, last week, if we were to sit here and make you interim and given what you've got and going by the policy we have i think we're setting you up for failure we need as many options as you can i think starting with the corporals would be good and i think going to, to an interim chief um an assistant chief would be a move too so that that's the way i look at it Just it, it will probably take you up to budget time anyhow for all of this to be in place because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. nothing moves fast in government no just so, Mike, like we said, if you need anything, please talk to Cal. Yes, I'll Go ahead, Mike. I absolutely will. And I obviously, I did watch the meeting previously. <laughs> and there's one thing about you talked about policy change. My opinion is that we definitely need to bring the Civil Service Board back into the mix. Amen. And right. uh, I would ask that you please do that sooner than later. Much of what was a problem might have been solved had it been gone through a Civil Service Correct. Board. Uh, years ago, they were. They were extraordinarily powerful. So I, I absolutely agree with you. So my, based on the discussion, are we maybe suggesting that we wait for a report? Let's see what's going on. Let's get input from our interim chief. Um, so maybe, maybe we wait on a recruiter for a few weeks until we get a hold of what exactly is going on, what exactly we're looking for. Um, I, I've heard that there are maybe some hidden gems out there. I heard a name today, Mr. Lombardi. I mean, if that's something we want to go eventually and not asking for any decisions now, maybe, maybe that person comes in as the deputy chief under Palma for six months till they get everything under control. And then Palma goes to back to uh, deputy chief and that person takes over. But <clears throat> what I'm getting at is, are we, should we wait a few weeks to have to bring in a recruiter and start that process in case we do find someone. I think it's going to take you a few weeks to right. find the recruiter anyway. Yeah, I mean, I can, in thing. the interim, I can get proposals yeah. from right. recruiters proposals and just see where we're, we just where we're at. Hire. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, anybody, any other questions up here from anybody? No? Anybody from the public like to wish our new chief good luck? Julie Jones. You're the, you're the first one. First Julie. of all, I'd like to congratulate Lee. I know Mike. I've worked with him uh, on a couple of cases here or there. You know, he's a great guy. Um, I, I just had a suggestion, and I know I'm just a dumb old lady, but let's just pretend you have three candidates for police chief. How about bringing in a few retired police chiefs to sit on, on your interviews? Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> all right. Anybody else? No Zoom, right? Is there anybody on Zoom? No? All right. No. <clears throat> Voice. If nobody has any other questions, we're good? David? No? All good. Thank you. All right. Meeting adjourned, and congratulations, Mike. Congratulations. Thank you.